right. Welcome back to Last Second Sports, where we are giving you our take down to the last second. And today, I just wanted to talk real quick about this Debo Samuel situation from a whole different side that I don't think is being talked about enough. And and I did briefly touch on it on one of the shows throughout last week, but I want to get a little bit more in depth with it. This Debo Samuel situation we've looked at from the 49ers side of things, and we've looked at it from Debo Samuel side of things. But the situation is getting worse, it seems, by the minute today. In fact, another Instagram post from a music producer who is friends with Debo Samuel who posted a picture of him watching it look like ESPN or NFL Network, and they were talking about Debo Samuel getting traded, and he tagged Debo Samuel. So this doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon and i think it's more likely that debo samuel is traded than the fact that he could end up staying on this team but we'll see well let's assume for this conversation that he is off the team now there are two players that this has a significant impact on number one brandon Ayuk. now brandon Ayuk is a player that we expect to break out this year. And a big portion of that is because he's got rapport with Trey Lance and they've worked out now for two straight off seasons. But if Debo Samuel is not there to take number one corners, that changes things. Now, Brandon Ayuk is going to be a very good player. I believe that. But when you go against number one corners versus number two corners, that is a huge, huge difference. I'll give you an example. You look at the Rams. We all know who Jalen Ramsey is. Who's been his running mate for the last couple of years? Because it's been changing every year, and it doesn't matter. You know who Jalen Ramsey is and what he brings. It's a big difference going against a Jair Alexander or a Jalen Ramsey versus guys you don't even know who they are. So that has a significant impact on the breakout of Brandon Ayuk, in my opinion, if Debo Samuel is not on this team. Now, the other person that this impacts a ton is Trey Lance. Clearly, right? You're losing your number one weapon. But let's also not forget that the 49ers have lost Lake and Tomlinson. They've got a center in Mac who's sounds like possibly leaning towards retirement. He's iffy. But the fact he hasn't made a firm decision is a bit worrisome. Sounds a lot like the Joe Staley situation, although we knew less about the Staley situation than it seems, at least here, we've got open dialogue. Then you're going to take his number one weapon away. First season starting in the NFL, you really haven't played a lot of football in two full years, and you've got to go out there without your best weapon and potentially two offensive linemen from last year. That is a huge impact. So, To me, if they lose Debo Samuel, the 49ers for at least a season are going to be down a little bit. I think they could sneak into the playoffs because the NFC is weak, but I would not be expecting any sort of Super Bowl run. This thing is going to take at least a year to figure this out. There's still a lot of good players on this team, but that offense is going to be much, much different. And even though I think the world of Trey Lance, expecting a kid to start at 21 years old without all of those things, that is a night and day difference than what Jimmy Garoppolo had last year. And that there's already going to be hiccups, but there's going to be many, many more if you don't have those types of weapons at your disposal. So just something to think about. We'll see what happens with this Debo Samuel situation. And if any news breaks for any reason, I will be right here talking about it with y'all.